Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder. What is FASD and why is it called the invisible disability? What resources can be used to support an individual with FASD? This podcast will answer these questions and many more. We will take a look at the effects of alcohol use on a developing fetus, challenges in diagnosis, and the long-term effects throughout the childhood and adulthood on the child, the family, and ultimately society. Welcome to the professional development section on the Invest in Kids professional web community. Today's podcast is on fetal alcohol spectrum disorder or FASD. My name is Chris Langell and I'm a registered nurse living in Toronto. I have over 35 years of nursing experience in various areas. For the past 12 years, I've concentrated on maternal and newborn nursing. I worked with Toronto Public Health for eight years, facilitating prenatal education classes, as well as working in the weekend Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program. I worked three years here at Invest in Kids and the Parenting Partnership Team as a parent educator and as lead parent educator. What is Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder, or FASD? It's actually an umbrella term used to describe the range of disabilities experienced by individuals whose mothers drank alcohol during pregnancy. While the first and third trimesters are particularly sensitive times for our fetal exposure to alcohol, no time during pregnancy is a good time for a baby to be exposed. There are other terms associated with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder that you may be more familiar with, and these have replaced earlier terms. Fetal alcohol syndrome, or FAS. Partial fetal alcohol syndrome, PFAS. Alcohol-related neurodevelopmental disorder, or ARND. And alcohol-related birth defects, ARBD. As I said, these have replaced some earlier terms such as fetal alcohol effects or FAE that you may be more familiar with. But more important than the exact terminology is what these really mean for those who are affected. FASD is the single most preventable cause for mental and learning disabilities in developed countries. It's a lifetime disability and it affects people of all ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds. International data estimates that one in every 9,000 babies born has FASD. Taken further, that means in Canada that more than 3,000 babies are born every year with FASD and that approximately 300,000 people live with FASD in Canada today. However, the estimate is probably higher because many people are missed with this diagnosis. The range and variation of disabilities is vast and sometimes people are not diagnosed or misdiagnosed under other illnesses. Some people who have FASD have actual physical traits, but most of the effects are invisible and that leads people to to dub this as the invisible disability and the children that suffer with it as the forgotten kids. Babies whose mothers drink alcohol may be miscarried. They may have problems with internal organs. They experience stunted growth in utero called small for gestational age or SGA. They also are smaller children uh, during childhood. Physical abnormalities of the head, the face and the spine behavioral problems and mental illness all can afflict these individuals. Individuals that have physical characteristics of FASD are usually those of the face. This is the common face of FASD. And if you look at this, you'll notice that the eyes are smaller because the openings to the eyes tend to be smaller. They have a smoothness on their upper lip. They don't have the normal little indent on the upper lip that most people have. And their actual upper lip is thinner. Those are three of the most common. Young babies are rarely diagnosed because they haven't uh, exhibited these facial features yet. And their behaviors have not emerged. 
but diagnosis can take place later on in infancy and in early childhood when these behaviors and physical characteristics tend to be more manifest. As I said, those with uh, the unseen effects of FASD are often missed or misdiagnosed. But these children uh, generally, once they reach school age, may be labeled in school as disruptive. And they often have uh, trouble focusing their attention. They may uh, exhibit trouble telling time and later on may have problem with money. They exhibit inappropriate behaviors, sometimes social interactions are inappropriate, and later when they're uh, older, they may have inappropriate sexual behavior as well. All of this leads these kids to be somewhat marginalized. These are called the primary disabilities of FASD, and these individuals will go on to develop what are called secondary uh, disabilities, when they exhibit difficulty thinking things through and reasoning. They're unable to learn from past experiences, so they often repeat their mistakes. They tend to be followers, which often leads them down the path to trouble with the law. Um, they have problems remembering things, such as appointments. And they have difficulty with the activities of daily living, like trouble paying the rent or buying groceries. Often they have mental illnesses, and the most common mental illnesses in people with FASD tend to be depression and obsessive-compulsive disorder. And 